Hi guys and welcome to today's video. So you join me in one of those moments that most motorists get at some point in their life, especially when you're tinkering and tuning, modifying cars, and that's the dreaded engine management light. Um, so it's one that happens, it pops up, and most cars aren't helpful enough to explain why. It's just a generic warning light that tells you there's something wrong. Now, my recommendation would be, so obviously as soon as you get an engine management light, turn the car off, turn the engine off, and call a professional in, so get your car recovered or to a mechanic. But if you're stuck in a, a sticky situation and you need to sort of try and diagnose what the issue is, then what I'm gonna do today is just come up, cover off some of the steps that I would personally do, especially as I've just got my engine management light pop up on my Mini F56, but this applies to any of the cars, so I've done the same in the BRZ and the R53 previously. Um, for most modern cars that have got the OBD2 port, there's lots of tools out there that you can use now. Okay, so if we take a look at my dash now, this is just like any other car. You'll get a little yellow or red warning light to say there's, there's some sort of engine management problem. So, like I said, turn the engine off. If, like my car, you've got some sort of screen already attached, so I've actually got a, a P3 gauge over here. Um, and what that does, actually, when I start on my engine, it'll tell me an engine code. So you can see code here, 0036. So that, that's, the, that's the engine management code. Now, this is an, obviously an aftermarket gauge. Some of you might have something like a scan gauge installed in your car. That's going to give you the same level of code. So it'll tell you a code like P0036, but then it won't actually tell you what that code means so what you'd have to do is go onto Google and Google P0036 to try and understand what's going on with your car so as you can see from that code from the scan gauge or the P3 gauge is it's a really generic code P0036 could mean absolutely anything it doesn't really give you any indication at the side of the road so like I've said get your phone out Google P0036 or whatever your code is that's showing and it will give you an idea now, another tool that I've got that's even cheaper than the scan gauge or the P3 to actually read the codes is one of these, just here. So it's a little code reader, and when I say it's cheap, I mean I think this was £10 off eBay. Um, but what this does over the scan gauge and the P3 gauge is not only does it give you the code, it gives you actually a little description of what that code is, so instantly you'll have an idea of actually how uh, what the problem is with your car. Um, so you know how to react, who you may need to speak to to repair it. Is it a DIY repair? Is it something simple? Is it something a bit more complicated? So what I'll do now is just show you simply, there's a plug port on the end, and for most modern cars, I can't remember what year they introduced the OBD port, but most modern cars have an OBD port. So I'll put the specs on the screen up here in terms of what years all cars this applies to, not just minis, um, to actually be able to use an OBD reader. So I'll show you how it plugs in and then how it functions. And these are very generic code readers. Um, so any you buy will work very similar in terms of having, having being able to read the code. And if it's something you can fix yourself, um, and it's a DIY fix, so it's a replacement of spark plugs or something like that. You can actually reset the code using either these or one of your scan gauge or P3 gauges as well. So I'm not going to go into the specifics of how all gauges work. I'll give you a generic overview of this one and how to use it so you know how to diagnose that issue. Okay, so on most cars, it's in the footwell. Now this is on the driver's side in the Mini F56, but it could be in the passenger side, it could be tucked up under here, it could be tucked up one of the, behind one of these panels. But in your car, have a Google and try and find out where your OBD port is. So you can see here, there's a little door. Now ignore this cable, that's because my P3 gauge, actually I've just unplugged for the purpose of this video, so you can see the OBD. So if we go in, here's the port, just down here. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our generic reader and these plugs only go in one way. So just look at the, the sloped side and fit that in. And all it does, connects, you can see straight away, it should light up and power up to show that it's starting to connect to the car. And on this particular version, all you do is press enter. And you can see it's connecting to the car, waiting for the vehicle to respond. And depending on whether you've left the ignition on, it'll hook up to the car. 
Yeah, so failed to connect. So what I need to do, stick the ignition on and set it to scan again. So I've got the ignition on the car now. So you can see that's found it. And let's put that really close. You should be able to see it's picked up one error code. And then it gives me the choice to read codes or erase code. So if I do read code, you can see there on the screen now, is that we actually get a bit more information on the issue. So mine is P0036, the O2 sensor uh, number two on circuit bank one. So you can see there, we get a lot more information. We're able to diagnose a bit more what the issue is. Now you may still need to refer to a mechanic if it's something you don't recognize, etc. But at least this gives you an idea initially of what's wrong with your car and why it's thrown up an engine management light. So it's super easy to do. And dependent on your car and the process for erasing codes, we even have the option to erase a code there. You can see it's as easy as that. But obviously I don't recommend just erasing a code, you should always get it repaired, whether you do it DIY or whether you take it to a qualified mechanic that will fix the issue for you. You shouldn't ignore it. The engine management system is there for a reason. So if it's throwing up a fault, there, re there must be something wrong. So you really need to get it checked out or fix it yourself. Okay, so it's a really, really short video today, but it was just trying to help you guys get a feeling with some very cheap tools. So I mean, 10 pounds, nothing. Or what I personally do is I actually have one of those cheap gauges in each of the three modified cars I've got so that if at any point I'm out on the road and I get an engine management light, which you tend to get when you play around with cars, you change things, manufacturers have certain parameters, so as soon as you go beyond those, sometimes it triggers an engine management light. It's better just to have one of those little screens in there, so if you get that engine management light pop up, you can at least check what it was. I mean, there's certain modifications you're always going to expect an engine management light to be triggered. So for example, if you put a decat on a car, so if you remove the catalytic converter, which people do to increase the engine noise or the exhaust noise from the car, um, manufacturers obviously have sensors in there to detect whether that catalytic converter is working. Well, if you remove it, that sensor's still there. It's gonna pick up the fact that your emissions have gone through the roof in the exhaust, and it'll actually throw on an engine management light. Some cars, it will then trigger it to go into limp mode. Some cars, it will stop cruise control working so you, you have to remember when you are installing these modifications sometimes you're going to trigger an engine management light now there's certain ways to stop them for modifications not for if there's issues and there's actually something wrong with your car but for example an engine management light for removal of a catalytic converter you can actually have the uh, I think it's the parameters changed or you have it coded out so it won't throw up that fault in terms of the sensors picking up the uh, the emissions going high and therefore detecting that you've removed the cat and thinking there's something wrong with the car because obviously you know you've removed the cat the, the emissions are going to be higher on the car so it's a really smart system of being able to detect and tell you what's wrong you just need that help of a code reader to be able to do it now if you try using that code reader and you still can't get it to work always take the car to professional i'm not trying to recommend here that you just um, ignore an engine management like you've always got to read them and take them seriously because it could be the difference between blowing up your engine or not. Some of them are more severe than others. I don't want to be too dramatic, but some things can be minor and some of the engine management light, and unfortunately we get one light on a car. So it's always key to react to it. As soon as you see it, get that engine off. If you've got a code reader, read it and see if you can diagnose and repair the fault yourself. If not, get the professionals in, get the car towed, and get it to a qualified mechanic who can fix it for you. So if anything went wrong with my car and I couldn't fix it, the first place I'd go is Millsy's Autos. Amazing guy, uh, Jason. So if you guys ever are stuck in and around the Midlands, or if you want to just get your car to a mini specialist, then I fully recommend Millsy's Autos. Get get on the phone, speak to Jason, and see if he's got uh, the, the slot to work on your car. So hopefully you found today's video useful. If you did, please hit that that like th button so the big thumbs up on the video that really helps the channel and then if you want alerts on future videos so we've got more coming in terms of for example that engine management code we're going to be changing the spark plugs and a couple of different things a couple of sensors and um, just to make sure we've got no issues in the f56 engine please subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification bell and you will get alerts every time we upload new content to the channel 
So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bit, and there's actually little holes on the bottom.